Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It's Tuesday, May 9th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a calm, safe morning considering some of the weather around town. That's right. Overnight we had showers and thunderstorms. Quite the light show this morning. It's been a mix of uh, rain and uh, slightly cooler temperatures. Let's check in with Justin. It is going to be a cooler day, guys, because we have the cloud cover and the rain. And the rain was plentiful overnight for some of us. Not all of us, but some of us. And that rain is uh, starting to push east now. So uh, Gonzales, Cuero, still seeing a little bit of rain. But the heavier stuff is starting to shift over towards Houston. You see all the lightning strikes there. Still, we have an area of low pressure right over top of us. You can kind of detect the spin there with the precipitation on our radar. We still do have a few very light showers in and around San Antonio. It's basically in the form of some light sprinkles. But we'll continue to see a little bit of this over the next couple of hours. A lot of cloud cover, and that'll keep temperatures in check for now. I think as we head towards the afternoon, the radar is going to get active again with this low still there. Some showers and storms redevelop, and we could see some more pockets of heavier rain uh, a little bit later today. So that's something we'll be keeping an eye on. Uh, meantime, as we go outside for you, there are the cloudy skies. Uh, rainfall totals, we'll be looking at those coming up. How much rain did you see? There were some big numbers, especially south of San Antonio. More rain this afternoon, as I said. Then we have to pay close attention to what's going to happen Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Some flooding concerns there as some heavy rain makes another return. 66 uh, at the current temperature, 2.63 northerly winds at about 9 miles per hour. Your kids had 12 hour forecast. We'll keep some light showers in the next few hours. It will bring rain chances up, especially as we head towards the afternoon and evening. Showers and storms redeveloping and temperatures may stay in the 70s today if the clouds hang around it's a, it's a, a distinct possibility and then those rain chances will start to taper off a little bit as we get into tonight more on this forecast more on the extended forecast too coming up in just a bit we'll get over to steven now it's uh, it's pretty wet and soggy out there steven yeah and it definitely didn't help with the morning commute justin we have our scattered problems in and around town so let's just get started 410 at fredericksburg because right now i would say the big one that we're watching very closely at least two lanes of traffic in fact the three lanes may have just opened up right now as first responders are working to clear a pretty serious crash that was reported earlier this morning uh, i have pinpointed a tow truck out on the scene and you can see one uh, from this trans guide view that we do at least have one white uh, SUV or pardon me, a car on the, uh, the, the bed there. So we're going to see this progress continue to take place for a little while longer. Unfortunately, no word yet on any injuries or exactly how many vehicles were involved, but we hope everyone's doing OK out there. Unfortunately, can't say the same here with the traffic backups along 410 eastbound at Callahan Road. You see a little bit of oh, that orange out there, but this is backed up about five miles to West Military Drive. So we're going to have to keep a very close eye on this particular incident throughout the morning. But but as I mentioned, not the only problem that I'm tracking over here. I-10 westbound right here at Ackerman Road. We do have another crash that was reported. It was causing some minor delays for drivers, but it looks like things have uh, picked up and are looking a little bit better out there. But overall, the wide view of the metropolitan area still shows a lot of slowdowns at this hour. That could be folks just taking it slow out there. I haven't seen any other problems reported, but nonetheless, you want to make sure that you drive safe, especially with some of those wet roads that uh, can be expected. Back here at 410 at Fredericksburg, we are seeing some progress, guys. Hopefully before before the show wraps up, the scene will completely be clear. But for right now, I would say it's best to either avoid the area or start looking for those different routes. Mark Steph. Thank you, sir. Let's look at today's nine at nine. President Biden is set to meet with congressional leaders today to discuss the debt limit in hopes of avoiding potential default and catastrophic economic consequences. The White House has said it will not negotiate over the debt ceiling, but the clock is ticking. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the U.S. could default as soon as June 1st. A small step toward new gun legislation in Texas. State Republicans unexpectedly advanced a bill that would raise the purchasing age for semi-automatic rifles in Texas from 18 to 21. But experts say this bill has almost no chance of becoming law. Governor Greg Abbott has spoken out against it and blames recent mass shootings on anger and violence, saying the root cause is mental health problems. Authorities are looking into domestic terrorism as a possible motive for the attack at the Outland Mall in Allen. Social media accounts appearing to be the gunmen's show neo-Nazi ideology, racism, and hatred towards women. The Army says Mauricio Garcia was discharged due to mental health concerns. Meanwhile, the hero officer credited with ending the attack is said to be doing well. Authorities in Brownsville are looking into whether the deadly crash there was intentional, saying the suspect ran a red light before plowing into a group of immigrants, killing eight of them. 
The driver has been identified as 34-year-old George Alvarez. He's now being charged with manslaughter, but officials say he has a lengthy rap sheet that includes charges like aggravated assault and driving while intoxicated. Ahead of the Title 42 expiring on Thursday, Customs and Border Patrol agents have started a targeted enforcement operation in El Paso. They will be reducing processing lanes and passenger operations at the Paso del Norte point of entry. The operation will also focus on sections of El Paso where migrants have been congregating. New data shows the number of children and teens who died from fentanyl overdoses increased 30-fold in eight years. The vast majority of pediatric deaths from fentanyl are among teens ages 15 to 19. Doctors say the poisonings are happening with recreational drug use, but for younger kids, it's more likely due to drugs left within reach. With Ukraine's counteroffensive against Russian forces looming, the U.S. is set to announce a $1.2 billion package to Ukraine as early as today. The aid package will include drones, artillery, ammunition, and air defense missiles with the new announcement. The U.S. will have committed $37.6 billion in military aid to Ukraine since the start of the Biden administration. More than 600,000 federal student loan borrowers from the public sector have gotten their debts forgiven since October of 2021. Another 6,000 borrowers in the program will see their loans discharged soon. The Department of Education said altogether these cancellations will total $42 billion in federal student debt. Meanwhile, the payments paused for most federal student loans due to the pandemic are expected to resume later this year. Amazon may be offering to pay you to pick up your own purchases. The company has been sending emails to some Prime customers, offering 10 bucks to pick up orders of $25 or more at locations like Kohl's or Whole Foods. And that's today's Nine at Nine. In your morning headlines, the official renaming of a Texas military installation is happening today. Plus, never a dull moment with Elon Musk and the Twitter saga. And would you try a Marvel powered burger? Max Massey <laughs> joins us live in the studio with the latest morning headlines. And Max, where are we starting this morning? I'd really like to start with the superpower burger. Mm -hmm. We're going to get there, though. Okay. I probably I'm a big burger guy. This one. Might be a little, a little too out there for me. When you add coloring to things, mm, get thrown off. But regardless, we're starting with the debt ceiling and, and really what it could mean for families and, and really our country. We've been talking about it for months. In fact, we actually talked about it sitting down with two local congressmen after the midterms. And since then, months later, still a lot, not a lot of momentum towards a real resolution. So here's the question that people want to know. What does it really mean for you? Plain and simple, if Congress doesn't act, the U.S. could default on the debt as soon as early July. And here's the thing, a weaker than expected tax season, it increased the odds that Treasury won't have enough funds to pay for federal government's bills in early June. Remember, we just dove hundreds of millions of dollars into the IRS and they want more money. So how much revenue the agency collects in the next three months, it's critical. The U.S. actually hit that $31 trillion debt ceiling back in January. And since then, the department's been using cash and extraordinary measures to avoid a default. Putting it plain and simply, Moody's says if we default, then you know, close to a million jobs we lost, including the financial sector, it would decimate the stock market and unemployment would jump to about 5%. While all of this is happening, the American people not really showing a lot of confidence on our leaders like Janet Yellen you see on your screen. So a new poll finding Americans aren't confident in our leaders, and especially when it pertains to the economy. Now, right now, according to the latest Gallup survey, nearly half of Americans almost have no confidence in President Joe Biden's ability to do or recommend the right thing when it comes to our nation's finances. Now back to Texas. Well, it's a change we've been talking about for a while now. Today, Fort Hood here in Texas, named after a Confederate general, it is officially being renamed after the Army's first Hispanic four-star general. Take a look. So, the base will be redesignated today as Fort Cavazos in honor of General Richard Edward Cavazos. Now, he was born in Texas to Mexican-American parents, served in the Korean and Vietnam Wars, became a four-star general in 1982, retiring from the Army in 1984 after 33 years of service. He passed away back in 2017 in the Central Texas Post. It is just one of nine United States Army installations being renamed after the recommendations of a congressional committee set up to remove Confederate names from military bases. 
All right, so here's, here's a fun little anecdote. We had a tour of high school students in our KSAT studios over the weekend. Big shout out to our executive producer extraordinaire, Daniel. I wish I had a teacher like him back in high school. But here's the thing. I asked them if any of them used Twitter. I'm a big Twitter guy. An astounding zero of them raised their hands. But if they set up their accounts and they haven't used them in a while, those accounts could be gone forever. Twitter plans to purge old accounts that have been inactive for years. Elon Musk announcing this plan on Twitter just yesterday, telling users that they're going to see their follower counts drop, which I know a lot of people are upset about. But the social media platform says the goal is to free up old usernames. But this announcement, like many from Twitter, drawing a lot of backlash, a lot of people concerned about what happens to accounts of those people who have died. Now, Twitter announced a similar plan back in 2019 met with the same concerns. At that time, Twitter ultimately decided to leave the accounts of passed away users untouched. Right now, still unclear what the new plan to purge inactive accounts, what that plan is gonna be. All right, I know you guys have been waiting, so I'm gonna tell you. There is a new burger coming to Burger King, but here's the thing, it's just a little too out there for me. Let's take a look. So with the new Spider-Man movie swinging into theaters, mm -hmm. shouts to Miles Morales, a new burger is landing, there it is, landing at Burger King. Timmy, our editor, timed it perfectly. Ahead of next month's premiere of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the fast food chain offering a special burger, as you see here, a red bun mm. topped with black seeds, inspired by Spider-Man's suit. So from May 15th through June 21st, Burger King customers enjoy the Spider-Verse Whopper in a variety of different combos, including a Whopper, and you can put bacon on there. Now, we didn't have pictures of this, this secondary thing, but I was looking at it this morning. It is a Spider-Man Sunday ah. hot, hot take, cold take. See what I did there? <laughs> uh, the Sunday looks a lot better than the hamburger. I so, bet. So what do you guys think? Are you, are you in when they do the, these burger things? Uh, I kind of like the cup, like next to it, yeah. behind you. The, the Spider-Man cup with little eyes. Oh, OK. I'll take that as a souvenir. Daughter would love it. Yeah, there one you. for me, one for her. I'll split the burger with anybody. I'll, I'll try it. We'll try it once. Okay, we'll you talk bet. to a producer, see if we can get it on here. Okay. Live reactions. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Max. Thanks, guys. Thank you. 910, 66 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Teens from the East Side Boys and Girls Club are getting a special surprise today when we come back. Tiffany Wetzis is going to give us a look at a refreshed space for them to enjoy. A $20,000 makeover of the East Side Boys and Girls Club Teen Center will be revealed today. Tiffany Huertas joins us live with a look at the refreshed space that will provide a safe and fun environment for these teens. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning. Check it out. This is that refreshed area, a place where teens can relax, have fun, express themselves. And also there's a little bit of everything. We have computers on this side and we also have for kids that love music, and that's all. But <laughs> Brenda Lynn is joining us this morning. Good morning. I know you're really focused, having lots <laughs> of fun here, but talk to us about this project and what it means for the center. So this project was, we were partnered with Aaron. It's a 59th uh, project. Um, we've been partnered with them from 2015, and this is like $10 million um, coming out and doing this. So this area alone, is something for the teens. This is something that they chose. It was not led by adults. This is something that they picked and they wanted to see within their teen center. And they're gonna feel great about it because they were actually able to pick out um, budget and knock things off that weren't in their budget, but they were actually able to create a space, a safe place for them to come after school, for them to work in um, and enjoy their friends when they're here. How special is this center for the community? Um, I think we're very special because it gives our teens, not only our teens, our other members, a safe place to come. Um, after school, they can have help with their homework, they can have um, downtime with their friends, and we have sports here, so it just gives them an all-around feeling of greatness and enjoying themselves while they're here. Um, and if you look around, and we can walk around, there's a kitchen, so our teens like to eat after school. And as they're eating after school, they have their own kitchen to um, cook in and um, with the supervision of the staff. But they have their own kitchen area where they have their air fryer, their microwaves, their refrigerators. Um, if we have our coffee drinkers that may be cappuccino, they are able to do that also. Um, on top of that, we have our newfound uh, tech lab for them. It's a 
a cafe to me in my mind because they're able to come in here. They can relax. They have the sofas, they have the tables, and then they have the state of the art upgraded computers here in the tech lab for them to do research. Um, if they're doing looking up colleges, if they're doing applications, this is all here in this area for them. This is amazing. Well, a lot has changed, as you mentioned, right? So the teens haven't seen this just yet. They had all of this closed off because they're on the other side. So later today, they're going to be able to see this as well. And so exciting. Thank yes. you, Renlin, Thank for you joining so us. Thank and then guys. before we go, I want to show you something that hasn't changed in this space is Jumbo. Jumbo right here. I think he's hiding. No, he's right there. This little fish right here is staying here. So he's going to enjoy. He's going to bring more smiles to the teens. And what an exciting day here in the east side. We'll send it back to you. So cute. He's all, still there for the kiddos. All Jumbo needs is a little more Beethoven on the keyboard <laughs> from you, <Tiffany>. Yeah. <laughs> Stay <Later>. tuned for <laughs> that. <laughs> and that's all we get. Okay. Well, Tiffany thank, you, Tiffany. thank you very much. <laughs> Outside with Live Cam, one of the crazy things about the stor storms that we noticed overnight is they were going in all sorts of weird directions. Yes. And that's a, a really good observation. And one thing we're kind of dealing with here is the, the upper level winds, so the steering winds that push these thunderstorms along are kind of all over the place. They're light. And when we get into that kind of situation, that's when we run into the threat for flooding and heavy rain because these things just don't move very quickly. So uh, that's what we're going to be dealing with most of the week. Today we're watching this uh, area of low pressure that is uh, more or less over top of us right now. You can almost, almost detect the spin here on radar. So everything's kind of rotating around this low. And so we've still got some light showers here around San Antonio. Notice just within the last 10 to 15 minutes, they've started filling in again. So we're going to see some light stuff, I think, here for the next couple of hours. And then once we get a little bit of daytime heating, if we get that, there's going to be a lot of clouds today. Uh, then we should see some more thunderstorms a little bit later today. There are some thunderstorms as you get well east of here. So still some lightning strikes around Cuero. And then as you go east towards the Houston area, uh, really starting to uh, see quite a bit of, uh, of rainfall there uh, to our east. And that's where uh, heavy rain is really going to be a threat today is uh, east of San Antonio. And the uh, radar messing up on us a little bit there. But uh, as you can see off to the west, there are a few showers also uh, just to the east of Uvalde. And we're noticing a few showers in Medina County. So uh, rain is still a good bet today. And I would definitely have the umbrella with you as you head out the door. He's, here are the numbers from last night. And... There were some good numbers and then there were some not so great numbers. Dilly was the big winner. 5.65 inches of rain down there. There were flash flood warnings for that area where uh, some estimates were close to six inches. Uh, Honda 1.7, Stinson though 0 0.08, the airport barely a tenth of an inch. And as we look a little bit closer here uh, around San Antonio, if you're on the northeast side, New Braunfels got nothing. Uh, there are some light showers now. You may pick up a little bit, but you really had to go west of, of San Antonio before you ran into the good numbers. Uh, Castroville, 1.29. Bernie, 1.16. Bandera, 1.84. So good to see that uh, there. Uh, but hopefully we can spread the wealth a little bit. And I think as we get into the weekend, everyone will have the opportunity for some heavy rain. Right now, 66 northerly winds at about 9 miles per hour. Dew point is at 63. And you look at the satellite picture, we've still got a lot of clouds. Now there's clearing out in Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, Catula. But uh, here around San Antonio, we are overcast. 68 Pleasanton, 68 Hondo, 65 Kerrville, and right in the mid 60s here around town. With the cloud cover and kind of the rain cool there, I don't expect a big warm up today. And I want to show you the radar over the last uh, 12 hours or so. You saw the rain kind of merge, and Mark pointed this out. Everything's just kind of moving. Well, not in a, a intended direction. You're just kind of all over the place. And so uh, that's why we are concerned about the threat for heavy rain. You're starting to see the rain really pick up as you get towards the Houston area. And that's where it's this area here where I think there could be quite a bit of flooding today if you have plans to go east of San Antonio. But let me show you one of our computer models. And by 2 o'clock today, we're still going to leave in a 40% chance of rain. And I've upped the rain chances by, say, dinner time to 60%. The models show that uh, more may develop uh, along this area or near this area of low pressure. And then by 10 p.m. shows showers and storms, maybe some heavy rain just to the east of San Antonio before this finally moves east. And by tomorrow, I think we'll see a much quieter day. Still can't rule out some isolated showers and storms, but it's not going to be like today where it's uh, fairly widespread. So we'll keep in a 30 percent chance 
tomorrow. KSAT 12 hour forecast, noontime 72. We'll keep temperatures in the 70s today. Again, I'm not convinced it's going to be a big warm up. 79 at 4 o'clock, 79 at 5 p.m. with that 60% chance of rain. And we'll keep some decent chances going into this evening. As we look at the long term forecast here, so that area of low pressure moves away. Uh, we get one that moves towards the middle part of the country, but another little disturbance develops in Mexico and moves in this weekend. And that's when our best rain chances arrive. Saturday could be a day full of heavy rain. And these are the rainfall est estimates over the next seven days. Some showing four to six inches, maybe some isolated totals higher than that. Uh, it has been a long while since we've talked about rain like that. So here's the seven day forecast, 83 tomorrow, 86 on Thursday. I think Wednesday and Thursday will be fairly quiet. Uh, but Friday evening, the rain begins to pick up again. And then Saturday, 70% chance of rain, 60% chance for Mother's Day. And keep in mind, there can be some uh, flooding involved there, at least in spots. No, not Mother's Day weekend. I know. Well, maybe it'll clear out a little bit by Mother's Day uh, afternoon. So okay. That. Yeah. We'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> we will take that. And the good news is we're giving folks plenty of notice here to make some perhaps Alternate alternative, alternative plans. Yes, just, just be careful. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank, Thank you. you. 922, 66 degrees. Homelessness has been an issue in the Alamo City for a very long time. But after the break, we're going to hear from one resident who speaks with us about the impact it has on him every day. One city councilman calls it a human tragedy is making San Antonians increasingly anxious. We're talking about homelessness. As Dylan Collier reports, one resident describes to case that investigates how the issue is having a daily impact on his life. Inches from my bedroom window. <laughs> I saw You'll have to excuse the enthusiasm of Deco District resident Ruben Garcia. For years, he's lived on Rosewood Avenue, and for years, the constant presence of a homeless encampment in the alley right behind his house has frayed his nerves. I mean, I can literally hear him talking about cocaine and weed, you know, and how much you want, and all this stuff. I can, I can hear it right through my, my wall. And fights are happening loud. 911 call fights. Sure enough, San Antonio police have been to Garcia's address 19 times since March of 2021. For disturbances, thefts, and shots fired. Staff from City Council District 1 and the City's Department of Human Services have also visited the property. Yet the predicament persists. But this complex phenomenon now extends well beyond downtown and the surrounding neighborhoods. How many of you are crime victims? A packed house gathered earlier this spring in District 8 for a town hall as Councilman Manny Pelias led what he called a difficult conversation with Northside residents. We've got a crisis on our hands that needs to be spoken about in the most honest, raw terms. Pelias says post-COVID inflation has affected housing costs and that officials must address the changing profile of the city's homeless population which includes more and more families. This wall has to go. Garcia believes the starting point in his neighborhood would be to tear down this high wall, opening up a space that he says is hidden to almost everyone except him. I'm asking for your help, you know, make it a better neighborhood. And uh, it has been getting better, but still this alleyway needs to go. For KSAT Investigates, I'm Dylan Collier. So in lieu of giving money to people directly on the streets, people who want to give to organizations that help people experiencing homelessness could do so by te texting SA Gives, all one word, to 41444. And you can also find a link to that campaign on our website as well at ksat.com. Excuse me. 927, 66 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including which industries are paying more so their employees can keep up with inflation. Plus, we'll explain what makes game shows so popular and how they've been able to survive for decades. New economic data points to wages finally beating inflation as employers both add jobs and increase paychecks. But which industries are actually paying more? CNN's Cole Higgins has a closer look in today's Consumer Watch. Hiring and wages on the rise, at least for now. The latest jobs report painting a brighter picture of the U.S. labor market. Americans are starting to finally catch up with respect to wages and prices. The latest data from the Labor Department shows workers' paychecks grew in April by 16 cents to an average of $33.36 an hour. That's the biggest monthly increase since March 2022. Increasing jobs, increasing pay, 
mean an improvement in the cost of living crisis that too many households have had to work through over the past 24 months. Industries that are struggling to hire are handing out fatter paychecks. A recent survey from the National Federation of Independent Business found 53% of small businesses reported few or no qualified applicants for the positions they were trying to fill. According to that report, construction, transportation, and wholesale jobs are the hardest to fill right now. Meanwhile, employees in the leisure and hospitality sector, including bars, restaurants, and hotels, are also seeing strong wage gains. When the U.S. lost 20 million jobs in March and April of 2020, much of it was in the service sector. It was the hardest hit component of, of our economy. Economists say many service workers had been reluctant to return to the industry as it works to bounce back from pandemic losses and faces recession fears. Now, as we are on the other side of that, that hiring has really been strong. Leisure and hospitality has been the stalwart of the jobs recovery. For Consumer Watch, I'm Cole Higgins. Let's look out there with live cam. Kind of an improvement from this morning. 67 degrees, uh, still a little cloudy there. That helps out with the temperatures. Yeah, it's, it's actually going to be somewhat of a cool day, honestly. Uh, temperatures may hang in the 70s today just because of cloud cover and rain. You see it here on radar. We've got an area of low pressure over top of us. And so on the east side of it, we've got some good heavy rain. Gonzalez and uh, especially as you get over towards Houston, some really good downpours. There'll be some flooding issues as you go east down I-10. But even on the back side of this low, notice we're starting to get a little more development, some light showers, and even a few downpours there in parts of Uvalde and Medina County. So let's zoom in a little bit closer here and I'll show you that activity. And this is actually working its way south and southeast. So Sabinal, you're seeing a little bit of rain right now, maybe a good downpour. Hondo, which uh, got some good rain overnight, you're starting to see a few showers work in. And as far as San Antonio is concerned, everything's really right, light right now. But we are noticing a little bit more shower activity on the city's west side. And some showers around uh, Seguin and New Braunfels, places that didn't see much rain last night. So that's, that's a good thing. I think rain chances will stay fairly high today with that low around. 66 right now, some light rain being reported at the airport. Northerly winds at about 9 miles per hour. Your case at 12 hour forecast, 72 noontime, 40% chance of rain. We do bring up rain chances a little bit more this afternoon. That, and that's if we get some daytime heating that would help to create uh, some showers and storms. 79 the forecast high. And then we'll keep rain chances fairly elevated to the evening before bringing them down a little bit later tonight. But if you don't get rain today, don't worry. There are more ch more chances ahead. Friday, Saturday, Sunday especially, we should see some widespread rain, and that could include some flooding. We'll take a closer look at that forecast for you coming up in just a couple minutes. Among our top local stories today, San Antonio police have released a photo of a vehicle they believe was involved in a drive-by shooting yesterday afternoon that left a two-year-old girl dead. The shooting happened around 2 p.m. yesterday at a home on Future Drive between West Avenue and Vance Jackson. Police say the suspect's vehicle appears to be a black Chevy pickup with a temporary license plate. Police say two-year-old Mackenzie Hernandez Garcia was caught in the middle of a drive-by shooting. They say she was sitting close to the door when she was hit by a bullet yesterday afternoon. Police also say there were five other children inside the home at the time, but none others were hurt. Chief William McManus says officers do not believe the little girl was a target. Now, if you recognize the vehicle on your screen or if you know anything about the shooting that can help police, you're asked to call the San Antonio Police Department's homicide unit. That number's on your screen, 210-207-7635. After the latest mass shooting here in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott is once again stating that more needs to be done about mental health in the Lone Star State. So what is being done on that front? RJ Marquez explains the mental health debate and where things stand today. Sutherland Springs, Santa Fe, El Paso, Uvalde, and now Allen. The number of mass shootings in Texas is rising. Governor Abbott and many state leaders say the root of the problem can be linked to mental health illnesses and treatment. While that is unfortunate, I will say that our Texas legislature, the House and the Senate, are really paying careful attention to mental health and, and substance use for that matter. Allison Greer Francis with the Center for Healthcare Services in Bear County says there's been a renewed push, especially after Uvalde, for more state funding for mental health. Behavioral health care funding over this next biennium, which is 2024-2025, totals just over $9 billion, and that's an increase of 11 percent. Greer Francis says that is more than the funding provided during the last three legislative sessions combined. 
but access to mental health services remains a key issue. Greer Francis says there is a significant gap for people who need treatment and those who get it. Certainly workforce challenges um, that hinders access, funding hinders access. Last year, the nonprofit organization Mental Health America ranked Texas 33rd in the country for adult mental care and 50th for children's mental health. There are very lengthy waiting lists. Uh, for those who are trying to get into an inpatient facility, uh, both on the civil side. And a month before Uvalde, the governor cut more than $200 million from the department that oversees mental health programs in the state. Greer Francis hopes this next round of funding will pass and get help for those who need it most. But just about every adult that we see in our adult clinics needed that help as a child. Um, so the earlier we can identify and treat those childhood disorders, uh, the better off we are as a community. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Time now, six, uh, rather 937, 67 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Game shows have been on for a long time, but what makes them so popular? One professor says it comes down to science. We're going to explain when we come back. Yesterday, we briefly mentioned President Biden's plan to get air travelers here in the U.S. a better deal. As the peak summer travel season approaches, he's proposing new rules to compensate stranded or inconvenienced passengers when the airline is at fault. ABC's Derek Dennis tells us more about the president's proposal. This morning, the Biden administration taking a closer look at airline accountability. You deserve more than just being getting the price of your ticket. You deserve to be fully compensated. Your time matters. The impact on your life matters. Airfare refunds are already required for long flight delays or cancellations when there's a mechanical or computer problem or crew issue. But now the president wants cash, meals, hotel and transportation vouchers to be included as mandatory compensation. I've always wondered, like, why am I having to pay for this when I already paid for one, you know? There's some gray area with weather sometimes, and but if it's clearly the airline's fault, I would say they're responsible for putting you up. The proposed new compensation rules are aimed at avoiding the chaos of last summer when 20% of flights were delayed and the chaos of the winter meltdown at Southwest Airlines. The president says similar compensation rules are already in effect in Canada and Europe. And guess what? It works. One study found that the European Union required airlines to compensate passengers for flight delays. The number of flight delays went down. But the industry group Airlines for America warns the proposed rules will hurt customers by forcing airlines to raise fares. This all coming as the cost of summer travel is expected to be down 20 percent domestically compared to last year. Rental cars down 17 percent. But if you're flying internationally, expect to pay about 36 percent more this summer, the highest in five years. As for those new proposals, public comment and other work by the Transportation Department means it could be months before anything takes effect. Meanwhile, the updated website flightrights.gov will list by airline the benefits travelers must get. Derek Dennis, ABC News. It's not too bad out there right now, but I guess it's not going to last forever. Not this week, right? No, uh, we're still going to get some heat back in here probably next couple of days. But this is a nice reprieve from the, the warm temperatures and the rain was nice overnight. It was one of those mornings where you just kind of want to sleep in. Yeah. Uh, you know, we get those every now and then, just some rumbles of thunder. It was really pretty nice. We've still got some rain out there right now and uh, some showers uh, trying to kind of redevelop. We've got an area of low pressure over top of us and this is helping to give lift and create these showers. So seeing some light stuff from Garden Ridge down to Shirts over to Seguin, and this is kind of filling in around New Braunfels. And I know New Braunfels is one of the spots that really missed out on rain last night. Uh, but now it looks like you will at least get some as some of this light to moderate rain works in. And let me zoom out some, and you'll get a better idea of uh, kind of what's going on. So you've got that twist in the atmosphere, that counterclockwise twist right there. Then on ahead of it, you've got some very heavy rain that's lifting north towards Houston. On the back side of it, you still have some lift with these uh, areas of low pressure, and that means we'll get some showers throughout the day. And maybe once we get a little more heating, there could be some thunderstorms that bubble up as well. So the, there is a decent chance for some rain today. So far, we're not seeing any lightning strikes around San Antonio, but if you're watching us from uh, Gonzales, we are detecting some lightning strikes and some rumbles of thunder as that uh, band of moderate rain starts to kick in. And starting to see a few more downpours out across parts of Medina County and down towards Frio County, a place that got a lot of rain last night. That could add to some flooding concerns there. As we go outside for you, we've got cloudy skies in 66 at the airport, 67 Stinson, 66 over to Kelly and Randolph too. 
And our KSAT 12 hour forecast, a light showers this morning and then we'll bring rain chances up a little bit this afternoon with the threat of maybe some storms as well. Temperatures because of the cloud cover, because of the rain, we're thinking maybe upper 70s today. That's it. And then tonight rain chance is still there into the evening, but I think by tonight we'll start to taper them off a little bit. Uh, here's a look at the uh, satellite radar over the last 12 hours, and this is very telling. We had some storms in the hill country that dropped southeast. We had some storms that came in from the west, and you can see that spin sort of uh, that's there, but these storms kind of drift and they don't move really fast, and that's where you run into the risk for some flooding. Not great steering winds aloft. Uh, to kind of move these things along. So here's our forecast, and it does show that by 2 o'clock there's some isolated, uh, maybe scattered showers and storms. And this model wants to pick it up a little bit by dinner time. We'll see if that pans out. But I, again, I think the risk for rain today is still there, and uh, we'll put it at about 60%. As we get into tonight, the showers and storms will start to push east, and then things quiet down a little bit Wednesday into Thursday. In fact, uh, this model does not show much tomorrow. I still think we have an opportunity for an isolated storm, but the radar will be quieter as that area of low pressure moves away. As we look long term, uh, Thursday is going to be a fairly quiet day. We're kind of in between systems, but it's Friday. Another area of low pressure develops to our west and pulls in. Uh, and this looks like it will give us a lot of lift as we get into Saturday. And that means widespread showers and storms, not just for us, but for a large portion of Texas. And this could mean some heavy rain, too. I, I think that's kind of the main concern as we get into Friday night and Saturday, showing maybe four to six inches of rain, including today's rain. But through uh, Sunday, we could be talking about four to six inches of rain, maybe some isolated totals higher than that. And if it comes quickly, then yes, flooding could be a problem. Something we'll definitely keep you posted uh, with as far as that forecast goes over the weekend. 60% uh, chance today, 30% chance tomorrow, 20% chance Thursday. We bring rain chances back up, especially late Friday and Saturday is our best opportunity for rain. 70%, high of only 79. Mother's Day, I think rain early. Maybe we get a break late in the day and then even more rain chances next week. So it's an active seven day forecast, guys. Thanks, Justin. Game shows have existed for nearly as long as broadcasting itself. First one aired in the 1940s, and since then, they become an American primetime classic. But what makes these quiz shows so compelling? As ABC's Morgan Norwood explains, turns out there's a science to it. This is Jeopardy! From the reverse Q&A of Jeopardy! to the hangman puzzle of Wheel of Fortune. No D. Game shows have a hold on American television and its viewers, but why? Kenneth Sumner, professor of psychology at Montclair State University, says it comes down to connection. I think one of the biggest reasons is that the contestants on the game shows are very much like us in the audience. They look like us, they sound like us, they know the same kinds of things as us, so I think we can identify with them actually quite well. And once we're connected, we crave competition. A lot of game shows are actually structured that way to get you more excited and motivated to see a great finish to a game or see someone do something particularly well. And that great finish coupled with that grand prize tends to make us fantasize. What would I do with that money to make my life better or my loved one's lives better? It's something about the dream of it that gets people excited about game shows. Bottom line, Game shows feed our hunger for connection, competition, and camaraderie. A lot of these things have lasted for generations and generations because they are interesting and they are compelling to people. The rules are relatively simple, but it is a, a great way to kind of just relax and enjoy the game and relax and enjoy the people around you. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. And be sure to tune in to The Game Show. It's a four-part series celebrating the iconic game show genre. It debuts tomorrow right here on KSET. I have such great memories of growing up, you know, at my grandparents' house visiting, watching yes. Price is Right and yes. all those back in the day. Yes, uh, Family Feud was a family big Family Feud, one. yes. Yeah. Bob Barker, Richard Dawson, way a long time ago now. A lot of fun. Yep, 949, 67 degrees. When we come back, a look at the new book club movie coming to theaters on Friday. And welcome back. It's 953. The book club ladies are back and wedding bells are ringing in book club. The next chapter. CNN's Rick Damagella gives us a preview of the movie which hits theaters this weekend. 
a major character, especially the way it's photographed. Yeah. It's beautifully photographed and uh, just sumptuous. And, and it was a delight to be shooting in Italy for two and a half months, no less. We will have that energy, but it's Rome. So you, you get a second wind and, you know, it, you have to try the different restaurants. It was just so much fun. I like wedding veil on and a big sash across me. That was weird because we really were walking to the streets of Rome and yeah, people would would look at it. Well, this is a bachelorette party, so okay. you know what that means. It means... What's the protocol here? Where do I stuff the dollar bills? In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I think some of these guys are okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, Science with Sarah is back. Our Sarah Spivey will be out at Parales Elementary School making invisible ink with fifth graders there. And since David Sears is out for vacation, Mia Montgomery is going to join her and give her a hand. So we're going to get a closer look to the end of the school year. So only a few more experiments before the summer break happens. Also happening tomorrow, R.J. Marquez is going to be chatting one-on-one -on -one with the head coach of the Arlington Renegades, Mr. Bob Stoops, longtime University of Oklahoma head coach getting ready to take his XFL team to the championship game on Saturday right here in San Antonio at our Alamo Dome. So tune in for that conversation and much more tomorrow on GMSA at 9. Can't wait to see Coach Stoops. That'll be a good yeah, one. That's a name. It is. Uh, 79 degrees today. We still got some showers on the radar, folks, and we'll see some rain throughout the day. So keep the umbrella with you. Rain chances do fall off tomorrow and Thursday, but they pick back up Friday evening and especially as we get into Saturday, some heavy rain will be possible. You can always get that radar on your KSAT weather app, and uh, we'll alert you if anything uh, dangerous pops up. Okay, this weekend probably won't be the best time to visit the pool, but Cities Parks and Rec is opening 11 pools ahead of the regular pool season on Saturday. The pools will be open from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays, and you can find out which pools will be open by visiting this web story on our website. Splash pads are also open for the season. The regular pool season will begin on June 17th. You guys know how this goes, right? Memorial Day in the yes. school, July 4th, boom, we're right into summer. It goes by it's really fast. There. It really does. Yeah. Not ready. Well, here it is anyway. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs>